Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you're watching Marksman TV. This will be a tabletop review and side-by-side -side comparison of the Savage Ashbury Precision and the Savage Stealth. We'll go ahead and get into that now. All right, getting in here with the unboxing of the Ashbury. I'll go ahead and open it up. We do have a cardboard box. Uh, inside we will find the rifle. I'll go ahead and remove these foam panels. Here we do have it in a plastic sleeve. I'm going to pull that out of the way. Uh, we do have a chamber indicator flag here. I will go ahead and remove. Now, uh, right here we have a little box that says accessories, so I will go ahead and cut that open. Inside we will find our instructional and warranty information. We have, it looks like a Magpul AICS magazine. And we have our bolt here. Let's go ahead and remove that. To insert our bolt, we'll go ahead and pull the trigger and the bolt lever down. And I'll go ahead and pop that in and we are all good to go. Now I will not be doing an unboxing of the Savage Stealth. We've already done a video comparing the Stealth and the Ruger Precision where I did an unboxing of that firearm. I will leave a link to that video here. Uh, if you are interested to see what comes with the Savage Stealth, go check out that video. It is basically just like what you just saw. It comes in a cardboard box with the bolt, the magazine, paperwork. That's about it. So let's get into the overall specifications of the two rifles starting down here with the Stealth. The Stealth with the stock fully extended has an overall length of 42 inches. With the stock collapsed, it has a length of 38 inches. The overall weight of the rifle is 9.2 pounds. The barrel length is 20 inches in its 308 model, which we have here, and in the 6.5 Creedmoor, it is 24 inches. Getting up into the Ashbury, we do have an overall length with the stock fully extended at 46.5 inches. With the stock collapsed, it is a length of 43.5 inches. This does have a folding stock, which we will get into a little bit later, but with the stock folded, it does have an overall length of 34.5 inches. This particular model does have a barrel length of 24 inches, so take that extra two inches into consideration. Uh, this is offered in both 6.5 Creedmoor and 308, and in both calibers, the barrel length is going to be 24 inches. Again, remember, in 308 down here on the Stealth, we have 20 inches, and in 6.5 Creedmoor, we have a barrel length of 24 inches as well. The overall weight on the Ashbury is 10.33 pounds, so a little over one whole pound heavier than the Stealth. So essentially what we have here are the Savage Model 10s dropped into their corresponding chassis system. Down here in the Stealth, we do have the MDT Hunter Stalker chassis system, and we have the Sabre uh, chassis system. As we go through these, I'll explain a little bit of the differences, but other than the chassis systems and their corresponding differences, we're going to see a lot of similarities bet between the two platforms. Now, the Savage Stealth does retail around the $1,000 mark, and the Ashbury does retail around the $1,300 to $1,400 mark. Now, of course, you're going to find prices varying a little bit different in your area, but you should expect about a $300 difference. And when we're going through these, the, this comparison, uh, you should consider essentially what this is, is, is going up to the Ashbury Precision worth the extra 300 bucks. So we'll go through each feature and make that determination at the end. So let's start off by talking about the barrels. Both of these barrels are essentially the same. They are a carbon steel black anodized finish and they are fluted. They both have 5 8 by 24 thread pitching uh, covered by these thread protectors that will screw off. So if you want to run a muzzle device or a suppressor, both of them are ready for that. They do use 5R rifling. 5R uh, keeps an odd dynamic of lands and grooves so that your lands and grooves are opposite facing, which puts less pressure, which creates less round deformation on your bullet as it's traveling through the barrel, which is, which is good for enhancing accuracy at longer ranges. Also, the lands and grooves are button rifled. Button rifled is a method of pressing the grooves into the barrel as opposed to cutting. Both barrels are free floated and do use a 
lock nut here on the barrel, which can you can use a simple hand tool to remove them for quick barrel changes. Again, on your higher velocity rounds, like 6.5 Creedmoor, if you're planning on shooting a lot, it's a good feature to have for quick barrel changing, uh, which you can do at home. Like we mentioned, both platforms do come in 6.5 Creedmoor and in 308. In the 308 version, you are going to get a 1 in 10 right hand twist. And in the 6.5 Creedmoor, you will have a 1 in 8 twist. Getting into the handguards themselves, as we've talked about, the Savage Stealth does use an MDT Hunter Stalker chassis system, which is monolithic, which means the handguard and the receiver, and the receiver we'll get to in a minute, are comprised of one piece machined out of billet aluminum, and it is hard coat anodized. We do notice that it does have M lock attachment points as well as a stud here for a Harris style bipod. We will notice up here too a little shelf which is conveniently there so you can grip around the front of the magazine well. The Ashbury Sabre system uh, does come stock on this platform with the uh, single piece octagonal uh, handguard which does have M lock attachment points as well as a uh, swivel stud here for a sling or a Harris style bipod as well. The interesting thing about this system and again we'll talk more about this as we move into the receiver is the Sabre system does break down into different components so you can actually, it's not monolithic, this can be removed and you can purchase a separate forward hand uh, grip type parts. I'll roll in an image of the uh, options available but you can get different components. You just remove a couple of these Allen screws, the uh, forward hand grip can come off but you can replace it with anything else. So you do have that awesome amount of customization. Um, if you want to lighten up the rifle, you can get like the Sporter, which is a like a composite alloy, or a, uh, I'm sorry, a polymer, uh, which will uh, lighten up that load up on the front uh, if you uh, don't have a need for that M-Lock attachment type space. So that option is there available to you too. Moving up into the receiver itself, down here on the Stealth, we did talk about this being a monolithic. So again, this receiver is all machined out of one single piece of billet aluminum, and it is hard coat anodized. Um, up here in the Ashbury on the Sabre system, I mentioned that this uh, handguard is a separate piece from the main centerpiece system. Um, one of the main differences we're going to see between the two systems is the magazine features. So uh, the magazine release here on the Ashbury is a very, very nice large locking cover and it does take the Magpul AICS magazines which is an advantage to some people because you know if you have an AR-10 or anything else that uses Magpul magazines, you can use those and interchange them with this. On the Stealth system, you do have a smaller, a uh, little bit less ergonomic magazine release, and it does come with the MDT magazine. Uh, the Savage Stealth will use, of course, the MDT magazines as well as the aftermarket AICS mags, um, so you do get that option there as well. Both of these magazines are five rounds in capacity. Uh, the pistol grips themselves, the Savage Stealth does use a Hogue rubber grip, similar, you know, basically what you're gonna get on an AR-15 style pistol grip. What does have a 28 degree angle, which you're gonna get, you know, essentially it's very, very comparable to what you're gonna find on an AR-15. Moving up in the Ashbury, we do have the MOE uh, by Magpul grip and it does have the storage compartment on the bottom which the Savage Stealth does not. One other interesting thing about this whole chassis system is these panels here and I will bring this up to you. So this panel right here that I'm pointing to is actually removable and you can get other panels and inserts and replace them. Now the advantage is, is it's going to, going to give you differing grip angles. So you can get an 11 degree grip angle, which is going to be almost a vertical grip angle. You can get one that gives you a 17.5 degree angle, which is very similar to a 1911. And you can get the 27 degree angle, which we see on here and down here on the Stealth, which is what you're going to find on an AR-15. Now getting into the scope rail on top, the Savage Stealth uh, it does use a standard Picatinny rail, which is not 20 MOA of adjustment, it's just a zero MOA. One good thing though, is you do have here a shelf, which comes down, which allows you clearance on the front bell of the scope if you're going to be using a large scope. Now, if we look at the Ashbury, we will also see zero MOA, so you do not get that 20 MOA of adjustment up on here. And much like what we saw in the Ruger Precision, 
uh, you don't have the same amount of clearance up here. So if you are going to be using a large long range optic with, with a large front bell, uh, you will need to use some sort of riser or elevated scope rings in order to lift that up uh, to, for that extra clearance. And that could create a little bit of an issue because this does come standard with the Magpul CTR stock, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more in detail in a minute. But uh, it does not come in the box with a cheek riser. And um, I had seen a lot of pictures and video from this at SHOT Show and it did have that cheek riser installed. And you can see the little slits there for where the cheek riser clips into. But when I got this, and as you saw in the unboxing, that is not included. I actually did call Savage just to make sure that wasn't a mistake. Uh, and they confirmed that it did not come with the firearm. So in my opinion, that's a pretty big disappointment, especially for this price point. So you will need to either get a replacement stock, which I might recommend doing anyway, uh, just because this is an AR-15 stock, not a precision rifle stock. Uh, if you're not going to get another stock, you will need to get that cheek riser because most likely, especially with a higher uh, elevated uh, scope rings or with an elevated base, you're not going to be able to uh, get the correct amount of cheek height on the comb of this stock in order to, to bring your eye level with the optic. Um, so a little bit of a disappointment and I did want to point that out if you are considering getting this. So here in front of you, I do have the Savage Stealth. Now both the Stealth and the Ashbury Precision come with the Savage AccuTrigger, which is adjustable between 1.5 to 6 pounds. Out of the box, these rate in at about 2 pounds. Now you do have that little safety lever there, which some people don't like, but the purpose of that is in case you accidentally drop or jar the rifle, it will make sure that the firearm does not accidentally unsear and fire without you intending for it to. Again, because these are essentially both Model 10s put in their chassis systems, the safety is exactly the same on both rifles, which is a Tang style flip safety. Uh, red means dead, of course. You see that red, you're ready to fire. Now moving back here into the stocks, as we mentioned up here on the Ashbury, you do get that Magpul CTR stock that does not have that cheek riser. It is a six position and this is an AR-15 style buffer tube, uh, which is mil spec held in place by a castle nut here, so of course that can be removed. Um, unlike the Ruger Precision, you don't need to worry about the bolt throw coming back, there's your bolt, uh, into the stock, so you don't need to worry about replacing that with any other type of stock that would allow clearance for your bolt. Uh, and that is true, of course, down here on the Stealth as well. Uh, you can get, like I said, any other stock that will fit onto an AR-15 buffer tube uh, to replace that out for yourself, which is something especially on this one I'd recommend doing. Now down here on the Stealth, we do get the Fab Defense GLR 16S, which does come standard with a cheek riser here. Also on the back, you do get much nicer padding. So you do have more of aggressive grip texturing here to grip your shoulder. Again, down here on the CTR Magpul stock, you do not. Again, this is really for an AR-15, not a precision rifle, but you know, it'll, I guess it'll do, uh, but this is something that I think most people are gonna replace. Um, now, I have heard things, and I have, do not have any experience with this myself, but of course you do loosen these little screws here, and I'll do that now, and that's how you elevate the comb for height. Now, I have heard from people uh, differing reports online, and. Uh, tell me in the comments section if you've had similar experiences, but this I've heard does not hold up too well and will drop just like you see there uh, If you lay your head too tightly against that cheek riser. I know a lot of people have uh, griped about that uh, being an issue. So consider that as well uh, Both probably cheap options just out of the box something you will probably end up upgrading down the line now one cool thing about the Ashbury is you do have a push button here, which you can push and then bring the stock around and it does, you heard that click, click itself in place. So that's really for storage purposes, obviously, or for transportation. Um, you do have a second button right up here on the top, which you can push to then retract that out very, very quick. Actually a nice feature. Finishing up with the bolts here, again, they're really the exact same bolt. Uh, one of the cool features on this Model 10 bolt is a free-floated head, which allows the bolt head to move freely and interface directly behind the cartridge, allowing it to have a more precise and even lockup 
uh, with the corresponding locking lug channels within their breech face. Really the only difference between the two bolts is that the Ashbury model, Precision model, does come with the heavily machined uh, and large bolt handle which uh, also has very nice uh, grip texturing here on the bolt handle itself. So one final note is both of these are fully factory blueprinted, which essentially means that the receiver face, bolt lugs, bolt lug recesses, uh, recoil lug, and barrel lock nut, uh, essentially those parts, um, are matched and uh, tuned with one another at the factory, which is typically a process that you will need to send your rifle off to be done by a gunsmith. So it is nice that that is done at the factory with each and every example that's put together. Uh, that just adds to the uh, extra validity of these being precision rifles. Well guys, that's all the time we have for you today on this. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, please consider hitting that like button or subscribing to our channel. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section. We will have another video coming up comparing the Ashbury with the Ruger Precision. We already have a video of the Precision compared with the Savage Stealth, so we will leave a link up to that video as well. Again, guys, thanks for stopping by and checking this out. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time.